Hello everyone. In this chapter, we talk about belief in destiny. As we know, one of the pillars of Islamic faith is believing in Qadr. Whatever happens, good or bad, everything is known by God before their existence in this physical world, therefore, are recorded in divine destiny. Believing in destiny is established by the Quran, Sunnah, and Ijma, consensus of the scholars. Therefore, there is no room for doubt. Knowledge and will are two essential attributes of divine being. God knows things, things exist in his knowledge, and his will determines all of their specific and general characteristics, and his power gives them material existence. In order to understand destiny better, consider the following analogy. Suppose an extremely skillful man who is an engineer as well as architect and a builder. He wants to build a magnificent house. First, he must determine what type of house in his mind. Then the house exists in his mind as a project. Then he draws the blueprints and the house exists as an actual design or plan in the stage. After this, he builds the house according to the blueprints and the house acquires a material existence. Likewise, God has full and exact knowledge of the universe and all its content. In the Quran, Allah says, God says, whatever you hide what's in your breast or reveal it, God knows it. He knows all that the heavens and the earth contain and he has power over all things. Another verse, with him are the keys of the unseen. None but he knows them, and he knows what's in the land and the sea. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. Not a grain amid the darkness of the soil, nothing of wet or dry, but it's in a manifest book. In another verse, if the ocean were ink for the words of my Lord, assuredly the ocean would be used up before the words of my Lord were finished, even if you brought another ocean like it for its aid. The Quran states that nothing befalls us save that which God has decreed or, uh, or preordained for us. There are many hadiths which clearly prove divine destiny. One of them is that the Prophet said, peace be upon him, each one of you collected in the womb of his mother for 40 days and turns into a cloth for an equal period of 40 days and turns into a piece of flesh for a similar period of 40 days. And then Allah sends an angel and orders him to write four things. His provision, his age, and whether he will be good or bad. Then the soul is breathed into him. This hadith is recorded by Bukhari. In another hadith, which Muslim narrates, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when the semen gets into the womb, Allah sends the angel and gives the fetus the shape. Sense of hearing, sense of sight, its skin, flesh, and bones. And the angel says, my Lord, would it be a male or female? What about his age? What about his livelihood? Whatever God ordains, the angel writes it down and gets out with his scroll of destiny in his hand. Nothing is added to it and nothing is subtracted from it. Human beings like to deny, they like to deny responsibility for their sins and misdeeds. They ascribe their misdeeds to destiny. This is completely wrong because God neither likes nor approves of such acts. However, he allows human beings to commit sins and when they intend to commit sins, God gives them external forms. If he didn't, Free will would be pointless. Therefore, sins are the result of human decision through the usage of their free will. God calls and guides us to good deeds, even inspires them within us. But free will enables us to disobey our Creator, to protect ourselves against the sins and the temptations of Satan, we must struggle against our kind of desires uh, through repentance, asking forgiveness, uh, and also devoting ourselves to worship. In addition, 
we must direct and exhort ourselves to do good deeds through prayer uh, and trust in God. In short, because we have free will and are enjoined to follow religious obligations and refrain from sin and wrong deeds, we cannot ascribe our sins to God. Thank you.